Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts which they earn by watching. We begin with me contemplating upper stages for Starship, specifically hydrogen oxygen upper stages. You can see SLS's EUS there which obviously doesn't fit very well. We need something shaped a little bit more for Starship. Somebody suggested the S4B stage from the Saturn V rocket, but that also isn't a particularly good fit. We don't even have the engine on there. And so I cook up something custom and use four Vinci engines, which will provide more thrust than the four RL-10Cs that are on the EUS. And so we have that stout stage there. Uh, and then we put our payload, which is going to be food, water, and oxygen for Mars. We have a inflatable heat shield, so that will help it capture around Mars. And then of course, our CS thrusters to help it maneuver and hopefully get to our stations around Mars where we need supplies. So here we are launching with Starship Super Heavy. And this is still on the old computer, so it's still gonna be a laggy launch. Uh, we're a little bit away from when I got my new computer still. And it turns out it was also a nighttime launch, so I guess the frames don't matter too much because we can't see anything anyway. But either way, we stopped those engines short so that the Super Heavy has fuel to get back. And we continue with Starship. And Starship makes orbit just fine with the payload. And then, yes, making orbit. There we go. And then we have to get the payload out, which ends up posing a bit more of a problem because it's fairly tight fitted there, as you can see. We took advantage of all the room and it didn't want to come out. And ultimately I switched over to Starship itself to see if Starship could push itself away from the payload, of course. And then we got this sort of thing happening where obviously a Kraken is about to strike. So. I decided that we would use the time warp trick to get it out safely and it did go out thankfully and we could continue with our business so there we go we have our Mars supply vessel ready for its transfer and this is the transfer burn to Mars taking a pretty high amount of Delta V 4200 or so but it had that amount and we were able to complete the burn with the Vinci engines no problem and a very minor mid-course adjustment gets us to our Mars trajectory there. Then I decided to bring down the Starship. Now, I had a previous model of Starship that was properly balanced and everything, but then I redid that with uh, these flaps, which I custom made for this. Uh, with the procedural flaps, even though they didn't flap in the right direction, they worked, <laughs> which is good but now I made these flaps that do actuate in the correct direction like Starship does and they they just don't they don't do what they need to do at all ever uh, the game doesn't know how to handle it so we end up tumbling like you see here uh, I'm just uh, taking a look at the center mass and center lift there obviously it uh, would be going tail first at this point I think I activated the scent mode on it so that it'd be in its tail fo first mode but anyway nothing is helping until the end once we get into the thicker atmosphere it does go tail first and then we try to do a landing but this is best handled by KOS as would the re-entry be uh, so I'll have to figure that out at some point uh, I did not do a particularly good job of doing this manually and so we uh, well we go all over the place really and it's dark, so I'm relying completely on the nav ball and ignition again, and there's water down there. And we sort of splash down. And it's sort of safe? I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, and then the water physics is all a whole other business, isn't it? But we do ultimately get to recover it, so I guess it's, it's okay. Maybe that's how it'll be, I don't know. Anyway, so here is the recovery. It settles down. We have to wait till it settles down and recover. See, we got it back. Anyway, next I cook up a hydrazine tug that uses the candle RTG engines from KSB Interstellar. These are better efficiency than your normal hydrazine engines or anything with storable fuels, but not as efficient as the actual nuclear NTR engines, nuclear thermal reactors. 
so it's sort of a compromised thing. You notice it's fairly physically small on top of the huge hydrolock stage, but that's because hydrazine is super dense compared to the hydrogen and oxygen. So, well, not so much to oxygen, mainly to hydrogen. So, uh, it looks small, but it's really heavy, and it is taking advantage of the full capacity. So, once again, we launch with Starship Super Heavy, and once again, we will cut off the engines short so that we have some fuel to return and continue with the Starship. Uh, I should note that we are using the nine engines. There's the nine engine version. And so, yeah, that also threw off the balance. So we haven't really figured out the nine engine version as far as bringing it back down. Not that the six engine version came back down particularly well before either. So there is that. Anyway, this time the payload got out safely because we have more room because the hydrazine was dense. And so that is clear and we continue on with the maneuver to transfer over. And the, I put a clamp on the tug, a claw on the tug instead of the top docking port. So we've got a docking port at one end and a claw on the other end. And this will still um, capture using the inflatable heat shield. So there is that. Okay, and is the completion of the Mars burn. And that is our Mars trajectory with a very small correction that we need to do mid-course. All right, so with that, I decide not to try to bring down the Starship. This continued on its way. And look at all the Delta V it has on its own, like 18,000. But of course, when it's tugging something, then it will have less. And then I decided to contemplate a crude... ISRU lander, a crude lander that would be able to refuel itself. So we have the ISRU unit there and some tanks and I'm using the Apollo lander module because it's actually really efficient. Um, it's very lightweight. And then we have the radiators at the bottom in the hope that maybe they could provide heat shielding as well, but we need radiators for the reactor. We have a little nuclear reactor poised on top there and the ISRU unit, you know, we have to have radiators for that for the conversion and the drills and all that. And I tried to make something, but ultimately it didn't work right. So I, I decided to abandon that whole business. And next up, we have a launch of supplies to Lunar Gateway. And instead of using Energia, which I've used quite a lot, I decided to use a Soyuz-like thing, but with RD-170 engines on each of the modules. So four RD-170 boosters and then RD-170 core. This is a fairly common thing people think of. Um, I thought about modeling a custom one, but then things happened, so I decided not to. Uh, anyway, it's an idea, but it's... Uh, I decided ultimately that we would go with my Kasei rocket instead of using Energy or this for all the transfers, since I already had the Kasei rocket, and it's sort of in the same class. It was about this time that I also decided to redo the Kasei rocket to make it look better and make the engines perform the way they ought to, refining their numbers and all that business. So uh, with that revamp, it made sense to just go with that. And lately I've been preferring to use my own designs and my own engines anyway, because people have gotten weird on me, uh, controversial or otherwise bizarre. So yeah. And I best to just go with my own madness. Anyway, here we remove the old supply vessel, dock in the new one, and all is well at Lunar Gateway with all of its tourists, so we can turn to other things. And the first of our other things is a starship doing a mid-course adjustment on its way to Mars with a whole bunch of food, water, and oxygen that you see there. This was launched in a previous episode, and we are just doing this fairly hefty mid-course adjustment, probably because it was an earlier time in the window, and maybe I optimized for uh, upfront delta V and decided that I would be doing the correction anyway. Uh, same for this uranium nitride vessel that was launched before, and so it's doing the same sort of correction. And then we turn to Jupiter with MV Silence and this Europa mission. Well, what became a Europa mission, there's the Jupiter Wet Workshop, huge converted SLS stage, uh, with the oxygen tank being a habitat, and we are making many flybys of Europa in order to get into orbit around it, which is what MV Silence had paid for with his struts. And yeah, that's going to take a while because it has ion engines and we can't really use them efficient, efficiently to capture all at once or anything. 
There you saw the hydrazine tug that we had launched earlier in this episode making its adjustment and this is of course uh, the other vessel that we had launched with supplies and so it's making an adjustment as well all all very organized here and then we have our flybys of Europa with the Jupiter wet workshop and so this is a nice one that I decided to drop the UI for and Basically, I was in sort of a screenshot mood for some reason. And here is our close approach to it. Notice the periapsis is like 35 kilometers. So it was a really, really close shave. But that brought our orbit down, of course. Europa's gravity helped. But Europa's gravity is not like the moons of Jewel. It takes a lot of passes. So every time we uh, make a little adjustment to get our next pass. And yes, here we go again approaching Europa one more time and then we already have our next correction plotted so that we can get our next pass with it. It was sort of tedious. I mean, I would say that passing by Europa doesn't get old, but it might have gotten a bit old after a little while here. The problem is when things are tedious, we tend to become inattentive to things and that is going to come back to bite me by the end of this video. So a little teaser there. Uh, but here we make an, a correction and we've actually got two orbits there. So we're going to be passing by twice the way it's plotted there. But that tantalizing situation led me to neglect something, which we will get to. Anyway, here we are with this starship, the supply starship, approaching Mars, and you can, uh, it's gonna use the atmosphere to air break, of course, and, well, things don't go very well. It decides that it wants to point nose first, which is actually sort of the opposite of what the one around Earth was trying to do. Uh, it actually flipped backwards, but this, remember, has cargo in front, so it's nose heavy. It's got all that stuff in front and it just spins around a whole lot. The problem is the way it's going nose first and then spinning around a lot makes it so that it doesn't present as much surface area to the atmosphere and doesn't have enough drag. But I had anticipated problems so I did do a quick save on Starship's entry into Mars SOI. Rare actually. Uh, I have done some quick saves there but uh, not too many and I don't often use them but when I do I will tell you. And so this is one of those times where I did use the quick save and reload. Generally, I do not do that. So, yep, it's all been first time only, mostly. And here we are coming in. I've got the forward fins and aft fins up so that I can perhaps manipulate them. I don't know exactly how best to manipulate them, but you can see our center of mass is very far forward, it looks like there, but now this is flipping backwards. So it's sort of weird. I mean, you would think that with that arrangement it'd be nose heavy, but mm, it does not seem that way. And uh, yeah, not great here. This does not look like it's gonna work out. Again, the thing is we want to put maximum surface area uh, to the airflow in the atmosphere in order to capture, and this is not doing that. Um, this direction sometimes does that, Somebody suggested that I should spin stabilize it. I, I think it was somebody else during the live stream that suggested that. And so I reloaded and decided that this time we would try to spin stabilize it. And so here we, here we are approaching again and there we are spinning. Now will this work? Obviously this is horrible but you know we want those supplies. We want those supplies to reach their destination and if it works, it works. So here we go, barbecue roll. You can see that the fins are uh, tilted in opposite directions in order to make that happen, but yeah, it sort of wobbles. It ends up very wobbly, but it does ultimately get us a capture, I think. So yeah, inelegant, but functional I guess you could say. So we do have our capture and this can proceed to rendezvous with Phobos. It has to get over to Phobos. The problem is with the roll, Starship isn't great at stopping its roll 
And that roll was induced by the fins in the atmosphere being in opposite directions. The RCS just doesn't control roll very well uh, because it's so close to the center line of the body, so it took a really long time to stop that roll. But then finally we were able to ignite the engines. Anyway, part of the problem for it is just the fact that we have 100 tons in the nose. That changes the balance so much, it's really hard to figure out exactly I mean, not that we had it perfectly balanced to begin with, but yeah, the different payloads that it has and different amounts of fuel that it might be carrying can throw things off quite a lot because they're in such radically different positions. Unlike, say, the space shuttle where the down payload would generally be placed right over the center of mass, so it's easier to figure out. Okay, so we are making the burns to rendezvous with Phobos. And there is the capture burn around Phobos. And finally, we let loose with the payload. There was, in full disclosure, a little glitch here that required me to reload the game. So we actually uh, had to redo this part, but I did ultimately do it. And But we will actually have to do it all over again because of Envy Silence's mission. And we'll get to that in a sec. But before that, I wanted to show you, I decided to try to land this starship on the surface of Phobos since the payload is already out and can rendezvous with the station on its own. Uh, I didn't know what else to do with Starship, but I decided to set it down. It had barely enough Delta V to do this, but it did have enough because it doesn't take that much Delta V to go from Phobos orbit to Phobos landing. And there it is. But as I said, we are going to have to revert that. Uh, back to where Starship enters the SOI because I accidentally left NV Silence's mission suborbital around Europa. You see the periapsis is negative. It's got to slam into Europa like that and neither its ion engines nor its RCS, the only engines that it has available to it right there, have enough thrust to avoid the collision. So I decided to save NV Silence there being a nice person and uh, humane tourist company, I decided to once again make use of this save game that we have used so many times during this video already. And yeah, we just brought Starship in again. I tried to do the same uh, spin stabilized thing. It worked well enough, not quite as well as the previous time, but well enough. And we made the rendezvous with Phobos again. So as this starship completes its orbit, and that was the conclusion of the stream, we didn't get the payload out yet, and I will wrap it up here. So with that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.